What's up? Econ John here. In this video, we're going to talk about the Ramsey Cass Koopman's model. In this video, we're going to talk about the household's budget constraint. Let's go. So just some tips for understanding this section. I'm going to be doing a lot of deriving. The two main results are equation one, which is our household's budget constraint, and equation six, which is our no Ponzi game condition. In this video, I'm going to show how we find the no Ponzi game condition from within our budget constraint. So the household's budget constraint in the RCK model, which we'll be using in the next section, section three, is defined as our lifetime household consumption is equal to the initial capital holdings of each household, which is K at time zero all over H, plus the lifetime wages of the households denoted by these integrals over here, where RT, right, which is our discount factor, is the integral from tau equals zero to L, and this is the return on the market at time t. Uh, this is used to discount consumption in future periods. Rearranging this equation, we can rewrite our equation as our initial capital holdings of the household, which is equal to the lifetime wages of the household minus the lifetime consumption of the household must be greater than zero. So taking the integral of this budget constraint can be difficult. However, we don't need to, to understand the nature of the constraint. So let's rewrite the integral from t equals zero to infinity as a limit. So the limit as s goes to infinity is k at time zero over h, which is our capital holdings at time zero, which is the initial capital holdings, plus the integral from t is equal to zero to s of e raised to the power of negative rt times wt minus ct times L T over H must be greater than zero. So letting this be the case, let us now consider what our household's capital holdings at time S would be. So the capital holdings at time S is equal to E raised to the power of R evaluated at times S, which is our market return at time S times our initial capital holdings plus the household wages from time T to time S. So note that the household wage income at time S could be either positive or negative from consumption and that equation four is just three multiplied by E raised to the power of RS. Let our integrated term in our previous equation be gamma, such that it could be either positive or negative. So our capital stock per household at time S is equal to E raised to the power of RS times initial capital stock plus e raised to the power of rs times gamma, which is our household's uh, wages minus their consumption. So dividing both sides by e raised to the power of rs, we go and we get e raised to the power of negative rs to times the capital stock at per household at time s is equal to the initial capital stock plus this gamma term. So based on our first definition, our budget constraint can be simplified as the limit as s tends to infinity is e raised to the power of negative rs times the capital stock at time s must be greater than or equal to zero. This gives us the no Ponzi game condition, which disallows for ongoing debt over a household's lifetime. By imposing constraints one and six, we rule out such schemes. So this is what I had to say about the household's budget constraint in the RCK model. In the next video, we're going to be solving it by putting together both the household's utility function and this budget constraint. I'll see you there.